The Catholic Community Foundation is a place where our family, every school, parish, ministry, and organization comes together in finding solutions. Being attuned to the many unmet needs of our neighborhoods and churches, the Foundation's special capability is connecting those who care with those in need. The Foundation manages its resources with the goal of growth and providing a permanent source of community capital. Connecting us all together through a shared sense of mission, passion for improving our collective communities, and strengthening our social fabric. Last year, you may remember some of the ways the Foundation connected donors with Catholic causes. Let's take a look back at one of those stories. In partnership with Angela and Doug Ducey and Catholic Charities Foster Care and Community Adoption Program, the Catholic Community Foundation made a multi-year grant to help recruit new foster families through appreciation events. The first of these foster family retention events took place in November of 2013 at the Phoenix Zoo. This event was a parent family appreciation effort to help provide even more loving homes for over 14,000 kids in Arizona foster care. We're the Johnsons! Hi, my name is Marie and I'm a foster parent. We're, we're the, the Randall, Randall family. family. Today we're here at the Phoenix Zoo, uh, Foster Care Appreciation Day, enjoying a beautiful weather and lots of animals. Being a foster family means love and togetherness, unity, and just being happy. Um, I've been fostering for over 10 years now. Hannah was placed with me when she was three days old. Trinity was one month old, and I am so, so blessed. I think one of the great things about foster care is just the community built around it, um, all the resources you have, these, these events like today at the zoo. It just means unity and togetherness and just love, you know, just sharing love. What it means for us to, to foster, a way for us to contribute something good to the world and also just be a part of kind of the, the special, unique life of, of each child that comes into our home. I would just like to say uh, for the people who made this possible for my family today and every other family, we just want to say thank you. I can say thank you. This has actually really just been a wonderful day here at the zoo to be able to come out and enjoy the beautiful weather and fun animals that you know he's just learning about. It's just been it's been great, and it's great to see all the different families walking around too. It just reminds you that you're you're not alone out there. Thank you. <laughs> Guided by an evolving assessment of community needs, the Catholic Community Foundation, through collaborative relationships, attempts to do the most good in the most efficient way possible. There were many more prayers to be answered in 2014, thanks to the generosity of Crozier Gala attendees and legacy gifts left in the wills of Catholic benefactors. Here now is a look at some of the results of 2014 grant making. Religious and Seminarian. Faith is what brought these three sisters together. The mission of the Servants of the Lord and the Virgin of Matara began in Phoenix in 2011. With only three sisters dedicated to over 500 children, youth and adults in two parishes, Immaculate Heart of Mary and St. Anthony, attending to the needs of the poor within a 50 mile radius requires extensive travel. This is their prayer. The biggest challenge we have with the small car is that sometimes um, it's so big, it's so small, I'm sorry, that we have to put, for example, for the Christmas play, for the different activities or events we have, that we share material with one church and the other because we don't have them both. So we had to put everything in the truck, <laughs> in the car. So it's full. Um, our safety is a concern for us, definitely, because the car can break down and we don't have too much idea of cars, of course. Yeah, I went to Texas once in the little car and I, I went up the hill, but then I was praying the whole way. <laughs> the gears are not good, so we cannot go up because we just can't just drive. So it's the, that's a concern, especially at night. We prefer to travel all together for security reasons because it's not a safety neighborhood where we are. Work among the poor. More than 3,600 refugees were relocated to Arizona in 2013. Some were families of six or more, but the majority are single women, seniors, children, and infants who arrive without the support system of a family. The Welcome to America project, with the help of their faithful volunteers, provides this vital foundation, 
basic necessities, and a warm welcome. This is their prayer. The Welcome to America Project is a nonprofit organization working with refugees who have arrived from war torn countries and places of conflict to Phoenix, Arizona. We provide them with furniture and basic necessities and volunteer support when they first arrive to our community. My prayer for refugees is that they're able to find healing and start their lives again in peace here in the United States. A grant from Catholic Community Foundation would mean the world to our organization. We would be able to provide for more families, uh, leaving them self-sufficient and having the opportunity to take more volunteers in to meet with families in our community. Uh, my name is Dergam Ali. I am from Iraqi. I come in 2009. I live in Serrano village. I like it here. He do it for me, the, the application for the college. Uh, I, I am very happy for this. Uh, when I come in, and these people help me. These people, is, you have the mercy inside to help these people when he come in here. Communications, Evangelization, and Christian Formation. 85% of college students will stop practicing their faith by the time they graduate senior year and won't come back. Most Holy Trinity Newman Center invites students into a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ and His Church, leading to a lifetime of discipleship and evangelization. This is their prayer. The Newman Center here at NAU was started uh, years ago, 45 years ago, by a group of parents that were concerned about their children, the youth, who did not have a Catholic presence here on campus. We can have excellent Catholic grade schools and high schools and people can come from very strong families. But college is an interesting time where you find yourself in with this newfound freedom and new people that you're interacting with. And it just becomes very convenient and easy to forget about the faith. The mission of the Newman Center is to invite students into a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ and His Church, leading to a lifetime of discipleship and evangelization. My biggest prayer is that the students on this campus, the students who come to the Newman Center, would have an encounter with Christ and come to know the love that He has for them in a way that I've been able to experience His love for me. And when we seek first the kingdom above all things, we're willing to let go of money and all the other things that the world can offer and, and pursue God. We've applied for a grant to help our students be able to travel to a conference that's happening next year in Nashville, Tennessee. It will be the most important thing we do all year to reach our students. One of the stories we have from the last conference was that the night before the conference, one of our students was talking with some friends who weren't from the Newman Center. He said, where are you going? What's this all about? And he said, well, it's just some Catholic conference. And, and they said, oh, do you, you believe in God? And he paused and he said, uh, no, I don't come to the conference, he had a powerful experience and adoration and through the different talks and things that happened and he came back on fire. And he would come and he would sit in our daily mass chapel for an hour a day because he heard that it was good for him and, and it was. And over time, God worked on his heart and he, he's since become much more involved in some leadership roles at the Newman Center. And he right now is one of our best evangelizers because he knows what it's like not to believe in God. And so he knows how to reach people who are in that place and invite them into a relationship with Christ and his church. Sanctity of Life. The 2012 Department of Health Services report stated that 8,749 of the reported 13,041 Arizona abortions were for residents of Maricopa County. Catholic faith-based pro-life health care is only offered in Phoenix through three private practices and two nonprofit practices. Through the partnership of Life Choices Women's Clinic and Hope Ultrasound Mobile Unit, mobile pregnancy services and medical services are made available to areas that would not support a freestanding practice. This is their prayer. Our first primary mission is to save babies from abortion. In order to do that, we offer medical services, pregnancy tests, ultrasounds, counseling services, and direct aid. Our second mission is to provide an alternative of Catholic women's health care to women that otherwise might seek health care at an abortion clinic. And so that includes the uninsured and the indigent. And so we can provide the same medical services that are provided at a Planned Parenthood or another abortion provider, but we can do it less for less expensive and so much better. Today we're here at Planned Parenthood and I started as a sidewalk counselor and just reaching out to women 
in a very, very evangelical way, asking them if we can help them, taking them to the woman's clinic, we've seen so many babies saved from abortion. And so the difference that we're making is the difference between life and death. Hope Mobile is the, the only mobile ultrasound here in Phoenix. And Life Choices Women's Clinic has an array of services that we're gonna bring aboard Hope and that will be unique, not just here in Phoenix, but throughout the country, in that we can bring this array of Catholic women's health care services right to the neighborhoods that are most in need. We pray that the women have the strength and the faith and the courage to choose life for their unborn children. Youth and Education All of God's children deserve access to a Catholic education, one which is rooted in faith, family values, and spirituality, for many students, learning comes easily, but at Annunciation Catholic School in Cave Creek, 10% of their student body has diagnosed special needs. This is their prayer. Many things are special about Annunciation. <laughs> uh, we're new, we're growing, it's a happy place, it's a family community. Everybody's involved in making it be uh, the best school that it can be. We have about uh, 10 to 12 children who have been diagnosed with specific learning disability, which means they're average intelligence but have difficulty uh, performing some of the classroom work without assistance. I'm seeking funding to assist with a program for children who have uh, special needs, maybe specific learning disabilities and need some extra help through a resource teacher and some extra materials. These children are, you know, socially and um, you know, normal kids, but they struggle with going from their brain to the paper sometimes, whether it be through math or the reading or writing. And it just requires some special strategies that help them organize their thoughts and get them down on paper. It would help those students who need that extra help to stay at our school and not have to seek the help elsewhere in a public institution. And they are here learning not just how to read and write, but they learn about God and being good people having a good strong work ethic which we really teach here so it would just help it'll change your whole life I pray for my special needs kids as like I do for all the kids at the school and I pray for them all the time that they're happy that they have strong faith that they're going to be successful and be the people God wants them to be youth ambassador association grant making in smaller underprivileged communities like Williams Arizona Providing fundamental Catholic ministries and education with limited resources is a constant challenge. As the school system in Williams only provides for a four-day week, the need for structured, faith-based youth programs is evident to St. Joseph the Worker Parish. This is their prayer. St. Joseph in Williams is a unique parish because although it's a beautiful part of Arizona, it's very much an underprivileged community. There is a, a lot of poverty here. There is a lot of great need. We are working with our St. Vincent de Paul Society and our food bank continually to help really make a difference in our community. We are beginning two new groups here at St. Joseph the Worker Parish in Williams. The first is for our children. It's called the Wolf Pack. This stands for the virtues, the wisdom, understanding, love and fortitude and patience and courage and knowledge. Our children here in our public schools don't have school on Friday. They have a Monday through Thursday school week. So this is a unique opportunity to help the children, to help their parents who may be working on a Friday, and to also have some catechism classes and educational classes. A great opportunity to teach our children about the faith and to engage them in the faith. Currently our program is serving about 20 children, young children, and about 15 teens and adults and we want to grow that community but we want to build these groups so they'll be able to develop and we are hoping that this will ultimately help over 100 children and teens with our new programs the wolf pack and our youth group i pray that these beautiful children will grow in their faith that they will be educated in their faith that they'll be catechized that they'll be really to develop those virtues of wisdom and understanding and knowledge particularly to grow in love and service of God every day of their lives. There are 795,027 Catholics in the Diocese of Phoenix. 93 parishes, 23 missions, 6 Catholic high schools, 30 elementary schools, and 34 preschools. There are 99 affiliated Catholic agencies that provide vital ministries across our vast diocese. 
Your gift is the answer to someone else's prayer. We are so delighted to be able to receive the good news that we have been accepted as one of the candidates for a grant from the Catholic Community Foundation. I'm, I'm rarely speechless, but I am, because I thought that today was about convincing you of the need. So I was very nervous, and now I'm just very happy. And I can't wait to tell those parents. That's awesome. That's the students are going to be excited, and, uh, and the students who that's going to reach, we don't even know yet. They're the people on the fringe, they're the people who don't want to come to the Newman Center. They're the ones that need Christ more than anyone, and this money will help make that happen. Your gift has been an answer to our prayer for our unborn children. Thank you. Seriously, this is absolutely unbelievable. This is such an answer to our prayers, and we're going to be able to do so much good work with this. Thank you. Wow, that's great. <laughs> St. Joseph, we were praying. <laughs> 30 days devotion to St. Joseph. <laughs> For goodness, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Thank you so much. There are countless prayers and an almost immeasurable amount of need. How many more prayers can we answer together? May God bless you.